A commitment to a safer, more secure tomorrow. That is the mission of the Mixed Oxide Fuel Fabrication Facility, or MOX facility, at the Savannah River site in Aiken, South Carolina. This facility will be instrumental in permanently removing excess weapons-grade plutonium from the United States nuclear stockpile. And, as an added benefit, this material will be converted into fuel elements to be used in commercial nuclear stations to power homes and businesses in the U.S. During the Cold War, the United States and the former Soviet Union produced plutonium for nuclear weapons. At the end of this era, tons of this material was declared excess by both countries. The National Academy of Sciences performed a study of the management and disposition options for these materials. The Academy recommended, among other actions, that both the United States and Russia pursue a long-term plutonium disposition program. The program's goal? To convert weapons-grade plutonium to a form roughly as difficult to use in weapons as the plutonium in commercial spent fuel. Plutonium in this form is not desirable or usable by an adversary and this recommendation became known as the spent fuel standard. In the year 2000, both countries agreed to dispose of 34 metric tons of surplus weapons-grade plutonium each. To implement this program in the United States, MOX technology was selected by the National Nuclear Security Administration, or NNSA, an agency of the Department of Energy. This proven technology has been in use in Europe for more than 20 years and in more than 30 reactors worldwide. The Savannah River site MOX facilities based on Rivas, Maylox, and La Hague facilities in France. The MOX facility design has been Americanized to meet U.S. code standards and regulatory requirements. To supply the MOX facility with plutonium oxide, the pit disassembly and conversion facility will take apart plutonium pits, which are a key component of nuclear weapons, and then convert the material into plutonium oxide. The waste solidification building will process waste streams from both the PDCF and MOX facility for final disposition and disposal. In 1999, DOE signed a contract with a consortium, now called Shaw Ariba MOX Services, LLC, to design, build, operate, and deactivate the MOX facility at SRS. MOX Services is owned by the Shaw Group, one of the largest engineering and construction companies in the world, and Ariva, a global leader in nuclear technology. Congress mandated that the facility would be licensed and regulated by the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. The NRC has conducted intense reviews of the MOX design and in March 2005 issued their construction authorization, the first such authorization issued by the NRC in over 20 years. A closer look at MOX facility operations will demonstrate the safe conversion of plutonium into MOX fuel assemblies. The MOX facility consists of two major sections, aqueous polishing, which is a seven-level chemical process, and fuel fabrication, which is a three-level mechanical assembly process. First, the plutonium powder is processed in aqueous polishing to remove impurities such as gallium, americium, and uranium. This process consists of dissolving the powder and separating impurities from the plutonium by using tall pulse columns and mixer settlers. This purified plutonium powder is then packaged in cans and stored until it is needed. MOX fuel is fabricated just like uranium fuel used in commercial reactors throughout the U.S. However, because of the plutonium content, MOX fuel fabrication occurs in glove boxes, which allows access to the machinery, all while protecting the worker. Fuel fabrication requires very high precision and consists of apportioning, mixing, grinding, and homogenizing batches of uranium and plutonium powders. Plutonium oxide canisters previously prepared in the aqueous polishing portion of the facility are opened and automatically emptied to supply the fuel fabrication line. The equipment using the powders is arranged around a center material distribution artery. The tunnel enables the jars to go from the powder preparation stations to the pellet manufacturing stations. In the powder preparation stations, 20% plutonium oxide powder is mixed with 80% uranium oxide powder. An additional uranium oxide is added until the final percentage of plutonium oxide is about 5%. After the plutonium and uranium powders are mixed, it is pressed into a pellet about the size of a pencil eraser. These pellets are then sintered in a furnace which strengthen it and increase its density. 
The pellets are ground to within a few microns of their required diameter and sorted by means of a fully automatic system. Then samples of the pellets are checked to verify dimensions, density, markings, and color. Rods are manufactured by arranging the pellets in a long tray and inserting the pellets into a zirconium alloy tube. Each rod contains about 360 pellets. An end plug is then inserted into the open end and the rod is welded shut. The rods are assembled in a metallic structure to produce a fuel assembly. Completed MOX fuel assemblies look identical to uranium fuel used in commercial nuclear power reactors in the United States. Each fuel assembly will contain 264 fuel rods in a 17 by 17 array. Fuel assemblies are about 13 feet in length and weigh about 1,500 pounds. One MOX fuel assembly can provide enough energy to power approximately 4,600 homes for a three-year period. In 2005, four MOX fuel assemblies were made in France with U.S. weapons-grade plutonium and have operated for three years in a U.S. commercial nuclear reactor. The location for the MOX site at SRS was prepared for construction and on the morning of August 1, 2007, construction of the MOX facility was officially started. A year into construction, MOX Services has successfully placed over 30,000 cubic yards of reinforced concrete, 5,800 tons of reinforcing steel, and over 5,200 feet of piping. Construction activities will employ up to 2,000 employees, and when operational, the $4.8 billion MOX facility will employ between 800 to 1,000 employees, with operations expected to continue into the 2030s. The finished MOX facility will bear some impressive statistics. The approximately 500,000 square foot MOX facility will be equal to that of about 10 football fields. Additionally, the facility will boast 170,000 cubic yards of concrete with 35,000 tons of reinforcing steel and 100 miles of piping. As NNSA continues implementation of the Plutonium Disposition Program, the MOX facility will play a key role in safely and securely removing excess nuclear material from national inventories in accordance with the U.S. international agreements for the disposition of excess weapons-grade material. The beneficial reuse of these legacy materials in commercial nuclear reactors will mean less dependence on fossil and foreign sources of energy. Making this world safer for my children, and making my country less dependent on fuel sources. The Mixed Oxide Fuel Fabrication Facility at the Savannah River site, the cornerstone of America's nuclear nonproliferation program. This is one for the record. I'm Diana. Second round that we're doing. All right. Oh, my goodness. I just did all this. All righty then. It is the 23rd Monday, Monday evening. Here are your news updates for today. Um, out, of the, out of the watchers, there's a triple swarm of earthquakes in Yellowstone. Also breaking news has that there are uh, fires in the Angeles Crest National Forest above Los Angeles. In uh, Temecula, someone has burned a life-size uh, imitation of uh, President Ronald Reagan for some reason. Uh, lots of news coming out of the E and E news. I might try to attach something for that. It's still just more radiation. Radiation in the quadrillions, w way over what Chernobyl was. It was 65 to 70 uh, quadrillion, and Fukushima's way, way over that. It's in the hundreds of quadrillions. Alrighty then. Let's see if I can get back into that. I had no idea this stopped recording on me in the middle of my uh, thing. All right, let's go into the E&E news, energy news. 
and I have to run and take the dog for a walk. I don't know what happened. The whole thing went down. Alrighty then. Okay, let's go into the E and E news, energy news, Fukushima, Japan. Hold on, Maxi. He's right here. He wants to go for a walk. He just had a big snack because I thought he just came home. I don't know. We're waiting for the E and E news, right? Right, boy. I'm gonna attach a bunch of stuff on radiation and radiation in Hawaii and 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 a MOX fuel plant in South Carolina. You'll probably see that first. Yes, Max. Yes, Max. He's going nutty. All right, Japan professors. Problem is such unprecedented magnitude at Fukushima and national coincidences. Fuel rods melted through reactor floors. EU funded research. Fukushima atmospheric release of 210 quadrillion becquerels of cesium-137 used as upper bound in simulation. Chernobyl estimated at 70 to 85 quadrillion becquerels released into the atmosphere. Study contamination in Tokyo suburb three times higher than area just one mile from Fukushima Daiichi. Nuclear scientists, significant contamination in Tokyo is a serious problem. Asashi today. More contamination is leaking at Fukushima than TEPCO announces, says worker. Alarms inevitably go off during radiation inspections at end of day. Officials, nothing's being controlled. Prime Minister has no idea what's happening, which is a lie. He sure did know about trying to bid on those Olympics, didn't he? Fukushima worker, people showered with highly radioactive water at plant, leaking tanks, spraying out contamination. Alrighty then. And then in U.S. Canada, let's see what we got going on there. Max, calm down. He's having a fit. He's getting frustrated back there. Okay, Max, we're gonna go. Calm down. Okay, U.S. Canada. Okay, is that nothing new? I guess, let's see, here we go. It's loading. I already did this. Study! High concentrations of Fukushima radioactive material will reach west coast of North America, entire coast, to be affected from Alaska to Mexico. Can negatively affect human life for decades. Should raise concerns. Yes, we're going to go outside. Alrighty then. Out. Hear him saying out, 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 out. We're going out. We're going out. Get off the coffee table, please. Everybody get back. We're leaving. We'll go outside for a walk. Don't destroy the desk. You can hear the cat destroying the desk now. Are you destroying the desk? Are you destroying the desk? And what do you want? Get down. And what do you want? And you! What do you want? Out! Out! He just had a big snack and now he has to go out. Do you see the dog in there? Is that you? Okay, go on. And what about you? Get up here. Now, who is this? That's Tippy. Tippy's the good girl. Do you see yourself on TV? You're a good girl. All of you are just right here all over me. Okay, we're going. All right, it is one day down. Four to go before the weekend. Hang in there. I'll see you again on the flip side. Please be prepared for anything. Be safe. I want you to start start stocking up on your food, water. You should have everything just in case, just in case of any type of emergency. Alrighty then, and I'll and I'll see you again tomorrow on the flip side. I want you to put some bottles of water in your freezer, just to keep your uh, food safe, at least for an extra amount of time in case the power ever does go out. Put some so those two liter bottles in there, bottom part of your freezer, yeah, as long as your freezer's up on top of your refrigerator. This boy won't stop. They're all jumping all over me. Alrighty then. Say bye-bye, Max. You gonna say bye-bye? We gonna go bye-bye? Okay, let's go bye-bye.
All right, bye-bye. Take care. And make sure you stock up on your pet supplies also. All righty, then. Well, uh, when I went to Hawaii in 2007, I wanted to get a depleted uranium bill in the state legislature to, um, to help the sick veterans coming back. And I went all over Hawaii, and no one even knew there was any radioactive contamination in Hawaii. And I went on ABC TV uh, and did a two-and-a-half-minute news story because I had gone to Kona on the big island of Hawaii and measured uh, high levels of uh, radiation on a day that they were firing, they were doing live firing at uh, Pohakaloa Army Base, which has been a bombing and gunnery range uh, since World War II. Some activists claim the U.S. Army is firing depleted uranium on gunnery ranges in Hawaii, contaminating the state with radioactive fallout. They recently took Geiger counter readings downwind from Pohakuloa on the Big Island. KITV's Dick Allgaier joins us live now with details. Dick? Hi, Jill. The U.S. Army, of course, says it does not use depleted uranium rounds when it practices in Hawaii. But one activist says she took high radiation readings, which may indicate depleted uranium, recently on the Big Island. Loren Moray is a world-renowned expert on the subject of depleted uranium. She travels the globe giving presentations about the dangers of spreading nanoparticles of radioactive uranium through bombs and bullets. It's not harmless. It's extremely toxic. On April 22nd, she took Geiger counter readings in South Kona on the Big Island. 63. This is very, very alarming. Normal background radiation would be 5 to 20 counts per minute. On this day, she says she took readings of up to 93, which experts say is abnormal and quite high. That is horrendous. And it could only be because they were doing live fire with depleted uranium at Pohakaloa while we were doing the measurements. Loren Murray claims the Army is using depleted uranium on the Pohakuloa firing range and the wind is blowing radiation over South Kona. The Army insists it does not use depleted uranium in Hawaii. Dr. Lauren Pang is a public health official in Hawaii. In this interview, he says he is speaking only as a concerned physician. Regardless of what it is, Tom, it is high. It has to be looked at. Now, furthermore, she, you know, she, she, she went around the training area, and I guess it was high downwind of the firing range, which is kind of are contaminated in Hawaii with depleted uranium already. Now, there has been a bill at the legislature that would require testing for depleted uranium near targets at Schofield Barracks. The Army would not comment on that. Again, the Army and National Guard have said DU is not used in Hawaii. Reporting from the newsroom, Dick Allgaier, KITV4, Island Television News. And um, there, the day I drove through the base, you have to drive through the base to get from one side of the island to the other between the volcanoes. And, um, and then I went 35 miles south down the coast to a macadamia farm, and I said, gee, let's get a video camera just in case we measure some radiation. Because we'd organized um, a radiation monitoring citizens posse. And I had people going all over the island measuring the radiation. We'd go off in cars, six or eight or 12 cars, and um, do it together sometimes. So I ended up down on this macadamia farm we bought a, a video camera on the way and some film. And um, so we're standing there on the deck looking out at the ocean and listening to the whales. And I said, gee, I'll, I'll flip my, my uh, Geiger counter on now. And I almost dropped it because it went up to uh, as high as 90, over 90 counts per minute. Uh, and usually it's about seven. And I uh, just about had a heart attack. So um, 
we filmed it, and I called uh, Dick Allgaier, who is a, a radio, an I mean a TV anchor at ABC TV in Honolulu, and he heard me on the Jeff Rents program, and he said, if you ever come to Hawaii, I'll do a story on you. So I said, Dick, I'm in, in Kona, and this is what I got today. And he said, did you film it? And I said, yes. He said, get on a plane and come over right now. Well, all of the of the Hawaiian islands are completely radioactive from uh, simulated nuclear bomb testing on uh, different islands, on uh, nuclear rockets they were launching from one of the islands. Um, they were shooting... Um, the let's see it's called the davy crockett it's actually a mini nuke it's a shoulder nuke but they used uh depleted uranium in it instead of actual nuclear weapons because you don't want to shoot nuclear weapons <laughs> where you live and uh, off the battlefield and so all of uh oahu which is where honolulu is is contaminated on bombing and gunnery ranges and uh, all along uh, Pearl Harbor's a nuclear sewer, um, and the whole beaches and the and the coastal uh, currents go carry it past Honolulu and Waikiki and Diamond Head, so that very very expensive area of Hawaii is all contaminated with radiation. Well, and now they will have um, problems with the ocean releases from Fukushima, which when I interviewed uh, Dr. Christopher Busby in June of 2012, he indicated to me that the contamination from Fukushima had already reached the beaches. Oh, That's yeah. not to be confused with the tsunami debris field, which is traveling north of there, and once it hits the west coast of Canada and the U.S., it will curve back around and eventually end up in Hawaii as well. Hawaii is going to have some big problems and some of that is already showing in their coral. They have fish and turtles that are exhibiting lesions and I've had reports from people that live there and do a lot of scuba diving that the reefs are in big trouble. That's the Fukushima radiation and um, it's of course as I've mentioned radiation has a cumulative effect, cumulative effect and uh, I noticed when I was going to the Hawaiian legislature every day, and I was noticing on the buses every day, going back and forth, uh, that it was the sickest population I've ever seen anywhere. People were pushing uh, adult children with uh, completely neuromuscular problems. They couldn't even walk. Uh, there were people getting on dragging air oxygen tanks everybody was walking with canes and uh it was just horrible to see that and i said what in the world happened here well i figured it out finally the um u.s and britain did nuclear weapons tests and biological tests and chemical tests with different weapons on Johnson Island and Christmas Island that um, it, they're less than a thousand miles upwind to the west from Hawaii. So Hawaii was getting nuked and it was mixed with biological agents and chemicals and that's why so many people are sick in Hawaii already. This new exposure to Fukushima is going to have a devastating effect on the existing Hawaiian population and quite frankly anyone who goes to Hawaii as a tourist or for any reason is committing suicide. 